so this is about cryptocurrency and ruby i know uh, in singapore these days everyone is talking about cryptocurrency and buying bitcoin and buying ethereum and right now bitcoin is going down these days uh, and ethereum as well <coughs> so this is about how ruby as developers as ruby developers how we are going to do things with cryptocurrency and how we can impress our team lead or else our company ceo uh, doing something with cryptocurrency as well as doing some implementations around bitcoin or else ethereum i am dilum nawanjana and this is my twitter and github if you want to follow and recently i moved to singapore uh, and i'm from sri lanka this south uh, asian island and in sri lanka we have nice beaches and we have tea plantations as well as we have elephants <laughs> and then i'm a core team member of celluloid hope uh, most of you know about at least heard about celluloid early days in 2015 like we were the back part of sidekick right now it's not uh, yep <clears throat> earlier i was like going uh, around asia giving talks about celluloid and as well as cryptocurrency not cryptocurrency concurrency and as well as parallel processing but now i thought of uh, no one is interested about celluloid so then i changed my topic into cryptocurrency this is my first time i am giving this talk uh, so for this meet up i <laughs> created all the slides uh, for because previously i had few more uh, already prepared slide shows uh, giving talks about uh, concurrency as well as parallel processing and celluloid and according to matt's definition um, i'm a rubyist <coughs> and hope most of you are also rubyist uh, according to matt's and i'm working in a startup here called b bytes and we are working with ruby implementations that we are providing apis and as well as we are doing some things with blockchains as well as cryptocurrency things bitcoin ethereum so that's how i started and how i got interested in working with these kind of things and what i'm going to present today and yeah we are hiring i know most all of you have have experience with ruby and if you have any experience with blockchain stuff or as cryptocurrency we would like to hire you uh, so yeah we are we are hiring after this talk you can come to me and talk to me and this is how the story starts Once upon a time in October 2017 I was in Ruby Conference Malaysia in Cyberjaya and I was a speaker there with these wonderful speakers like Aaron Patterson and everything everyone uh and my talk was fortunately there on day 1 because of that I was so relaxed on day 2 listening to nice speeches and <coughs> there was a speech about chasing pandas by daniel bark on the day 2 and he was talking about python data analysis library called pandas <coughs> which is really famous uh, like uh, everyone is using for data analysis this pandas and his talk is about to, uh, how they are going to write their own ruby implementation to chase pandas away and yes uh i was there in the audience listening to this talk and he was talking about daru as well so this is the exact photo that i took uh, <coughs> in that talk and i was thinking why always python for data analysis uh and then i was thinking is it because it is the fastest or else is it because it is the third party support or else the community support we have uh for the pandas and as well as python uh when it comes to data analysis and then this came to my mind why we use rails or else ruby for web application development those kind of things uh is it the fastest i don't think so uh and is it because of the third party support we have or else the community support we have and Yes then uh, I realized yes this is the reason that we use rails and as well as people use python and as well as pandas for their own projects and in 
next few months after October, I was assigned to do some implementations with blockchain stuff uh, in my workplace. So <coughs> I had that in my mind as well. So initially, I was going to do some implementations with Bitcoin as well as Ethereum in November and December months. And initially, my sorry. Initially, my plan was to go with Golang because that is uh, we, in Golang there were so many libraries which supports communicating with those nodes and blockchain stuff. So that was my initial plan to go with the easiest way. And after listening to that talk, I decided, not actually, I decided I found this guy and took a photo. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I decided uh, I'm going to create something with Ruby <coughs> uh, rather than going with Golang. So then, actually, I was watching Narcos those days. Uh, first few seasons, I, I was always uh, late for the TV series. Actually, so I was watching Narcos these days. Those days, uh, in October, this, uh, November, two thousand seventeen, and while I was packing my bags uh, after the conference to come back to Singapore, I got this message from one of my friend uh, recommending me to watch El Chapo, uh, which is related to Narcos as well, uh, which is kind of related to drug-related drug things. So he recommended me to like watch this as well and then uh, while uh, I was uh, coming back to Singapore from Malaysia uh, I was thinking a name for a gem that I am going to build uh, for my implementation that I am going to do <coughs> with Ethereum, Bitcoin, those kind of things and then at the airport of Kuala Lumpur I got, to, I got the name and I went to <coughs> a computer box and then went to rubygems.org and searched for a gem. Is there any gem called El Chapo? Fortunately, there wasn't. And then this is my gem that I created. <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, one day I can tell I am the creator of El Chapo. Uh, so yeah, uh, and that's the end of the story. And in this talk, I'm not going to define cryptocurrencies. So I'm not going to talk about how well and what's the implementation of cryptocurrency and as well as what is the definition of Bitcoin. You can just Google and search it. Uh, like <coughs> It's easy. They are everywhere. They are, many people have many uh, defini definitions of their own. Some people say cryptocurrency uh, is a database. Some people say, no, it's not a database. It's like a database, but it's not a database, those kind of things. But blockchain, uh, as I think, so this is not the correct definition, but as I think, blockchain is kind of a data structure which is similar, like which is which has some uh, attributes uh, which has like linked list that we used to learn in our university and never used again. <coughs> uh, so. This is a linked list uh, which has nodes and then pointing to the next node and then going on. And this is uh, implementation of Bitcoin which has blocks and then pointing to the previous block. And for like programmers like us or as developers, so we can define cryptocurrency or else blockchains as a data structure. And then if you can see, this inside this blockchain in inside a block you can see there are multiple transactions uh, going on so earlier days in like 2009 2010 2011 bitcoin block contains about 30 to 40 transactions but right now it has more than 2000 uh, transactions per block so block size is increasing day by day uh, for bitcoin so it is uh, inside a block, uh, block there are multiple transactions uh, written in. And yes, let's go into the gem implementation that I did. So in Ethereum, there are exposed APIs by them, the creators of Ethereum, 
uh, for inter-process communication and as well as remote procedure calls. Uh, they call it IPC and RPC. And for Bitcoin, uh, they only have RPC, which is kind of HTTP exposed APIs that we can call them if we are running a Bitcoin daemon or else Ethereum node inside, uh, inside our machine or else a server that we can access. We can call those APIs and we can do almost everything that uh, Ethereum or else Bitcoin GUI applications do like uh, sending transactions or else see, uh, check wallet balances and everything that uh, uh, GUI applications do. So the El Chapo gem that I created was like a Ruby wrapper around this API which uh, you can easily connect to uh, from which you can easily connect to those nodes and then you can do whatever the APIs that they have already exposed. So in this talk, I am going to look into more about Bitcoin RPC API. So <clears throat> this is the documentation. You can just go and Google for Bitcoin RPC API. There are so many methods that uh, they have exposed. Like you can do uh, get account or else create transactions and like everything uh, that you can do, yeah, like you can think of doing in Bitcoin network. And as well as you can see transactions or else you can get uh, transaction details like uh, from whom to whom that uh, amount has sent or else uh, uh, this value has sent uh, and everything. So in this gem that I created, you can, uh, you have to first of all create an HTTP connection. So for that, you have to run <coughs> a Docker, uh, not Docker, actually a Bitcoin daemon. And then you have to pass uh, username and password. Uh, when you are starting a Bitcoin daemon, you have to initiate your username and password. So <coughs> in this connection, you have to mention that uh, username and password, then only you will be able to uh, call those RPC APIs. So <coughs> first of all, initially I used Docker, uh, a Docker <laughs> container. So it was easy for me uh, to do the testings. And then uh, this testnet means uh, initially I was connecting to the Bitcoin's uh, test network. So I don't need to download hun around 100 GB, 200 GB network from, uh, to my machine. So it was easy and as well as these are the parameters that I have to pass uh, when I <coughs> run my Docker, uh, Docker container with a Bitcoin daemon. So with this username as well as the password and uh, port and everything, I can connect to uh, <coughs> this HTTP connection. And then uh, uh, with this uh, Ruby wrapper that I created, you can just call whatever the uh, methods and as well as you, you can pass uh, the parameters as a just Ruby method calling. So the, if you want to just uh, look at the container that I created, it's there uh, in Bitcoin RB in my uh, GitHub. And then I managed to connect and I managed to finish whatever the task that I was assigned uh, in my workplace to do in these uh, few months. And then uh, one weekend, I was so bored and I didn't have anything to do. And I was thinking, what should I do? And I, ha I have created a gem and I haven't done anything cool with that. All those things are like doing transactions and checking transaction, validation transactions, those kind of things. And then this came to my mind to convert blockchain to SQL. Uh, so this is actually to convert Bitcoin transactions to SQL. So initially my idea was to convert all Bitcoin transactions to SQL. So then I can query very easily some secret details about Bitcoin transactions uh, like uh, with SQL queries. So that was my idea. And I was iterating through the blocks from zero to right now it has around 500,000 plus plus something blocks. So <coughs> it's just a simple Ruby script that I wrote and going through, iterating through blocks uh, one by one. And this is kind of a, a JSON sample that we get from the API. So you can see uh, the block 
Uh, here is 237,764 uh, block uh, that I show here and there are so many transactions, uh, there is an array of transaction hashes. So using these transaction hashes, I can get the transaction raw details. So in, inside these raw details, there are everything that we uh, want to know about transactions. So I can uh, see who sent this value to whom or else uh, what's the value uh, of this transaction and everything or else I can even see uh, this is uh, a mined transaction, uh, mined coin or else is this someone else uh, sent to something and then yes I managed to write the Ruby script uh, and initially I used active record to save it to SQL and this is kind of a sample that I uh, saved. Uh, I, I was saving the block uh, number and as well as the transaction ID for a transaction and as well as the block hash and the value which is most important for my work and then the transaction created that date and the sender who is the sender of this transaction receiver and as well as the balance receiver. So balance receiver means it's something different from Ethereum to blow, uh, Bitcoin that means if you want to send if you have 10 bitcoins in your wallet and you want to send 7 bitcoins to one of your friend's wallet, uh, there will be a transaction initiated and from your uh, address to your uh, friend's address there will be send, uh, 7 bitcoins will be transferred and the rest of your 3 bitcoin uh, bitcoins will be gone into a separate wallet of your own. So that's why I need this balance receiver to keep track where the money goes. So <coughs> initially I th uh, thought it will be like uh, 5 days maximum work to trans uh, convert everything because uh, when I was running uh, this script in the testnet uh, it took me about 2 days so I thought maximum 5 days for the main network but I was <coughs> waiting, waiting, <laughs> waiting and yes uh, within one week I was still uh, running on like uh, 100,000 blocks I, I can't even uh, I couldn't even like come to the halfway of the uh, transactions and then uh, I decided okay I need to uh, do some modifications for the script to run it faster and then I found this gem called bulk insert which uh, lets you <coughs> bulk insert queries uh, active record uh, objects into the SQL so then I modified my uh, Ruby script to uh, insert 500 by 500 transactions into the SQL so which was faster than initially but it was still not faster and then so far I managed to <coughs> so actually my plan was to come here with the full database but I couldn't. <laughs> because there are so many uh, transactions there in the uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I managed to uh, convert 400 million transactions to SQL uh, and yes this is the database and my initial plan was to so that crazy idea that I had was to find the highest value transferred within Bitcoin as a transaction and one other thing, uh, I'm not sure whether I'll be able to do this uh, until, uh, until I finish my all converting of the Bitcoin transactions. So one other thing as well. And yeah, <coughs> after converting 400 million transactions, I got the highest transaction uh, by now, like uh, within this 400 million. So I have until uh, 2013 April 22nd transaction from 2009 somewhere that uh, Bitcoin has started and the highest transaction uh, until this day happened on <laughs> 2011 November 16th so you will not believe me okay. <laughs> Uh, so this is exact uh, record then uh, I, I can give you the block number you can just search on Google uh, block explorer this is the amount that transferred on this day uh, in a single transaction on block uh, 153,527 block and the amount is 
499,720.7 bitcoins transferred in a single transaction on that day. So initially I didn't believe after querying this database uh, for the highest value. And then <coughs> I searched uh, this transaction on uh, blogsplorer.com. And yes, it's a confirmed transaction which uh, has confirmations. That means it's a true transaction happened. And then who else other than the creator of uh, Bitcoin <laughs> uh, got more about five, uh, 500K by 2011? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, uh, the one other thing plan was uh, mine was to track this wallet <laughs> and, uh, until today. So after I... <laughs> convert uh, all the transactions to SQL, then I will track uh, who owns this much of amount right now. And yeah, if uh, one Bitcoin is uh, around 400,000 Singapore dollars right now, uh, that amount that transferred on that day is almost about 7 billion Singapore dollars worth of transaction right now, if it happens right now. So early those days, it's so it was about like uh, one million, but right now it's about six, uh, seven billion Singapore dollars. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. So, do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned that you started using Active Record and then about insert, but this is still like probably the slowest way to move anything from code to database. Can you consider just like you know writing? using just plain strings to convert some stuff to the plain SQL and then put the database? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, so <coughs> initially I didn't know uh, that this will uh, there will be this much of transactions initially. That's why I just used uh, active record. Then I uh, realized that this is not going to end uh, like at least in two months. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, so that's why I found, I uh, changed it to using bulk insert, uh, which was right now really good, uh, which was performing uh, like almost as like fast as I want, but there are so many transactions going on, uh, happening there, like uh, even though I am writing to the database 500 uh, transactions per, tra uh, 500 transactions, like going through, iterating through transactions, it took me a long time. That's the uh, where that bottleneck is happening, not the uh, database connection and writing to the database as I think. That's why I was thinking like, anyway, it will take some time for me to convert everything. Yep. Yep, Paul. Yep. Have a, a machine somewhere that's just going on. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, this machine uh, <coughs> doesn't contain like much hard drive for me to run everything. I have another machine at home, so running. <laughs> Uh, everything. Uh, so if you want that database uh, with 400 million transactions, I can share it with you right now. Uh, not right now. I can give you a link somewhere later in the meetup group. What are you going to do with the data? Uh, yeah, uh, initially, uh, yes. Uh, then after finalizing everything transactions, so my plan, the, my ultimate goal is to calculate every wallet's final balance uh, from the beginning to the end. So I can find who, is, who has the highest value right now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yes. Do you have a plan to uh, match people to um, address? Yeah, I don't think uh, it will be possible, but at least I, I can say uh, this wallet address uh, has this much of uh, value. Yeah, maybe we can track, track them back. Who knows? <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, so a little bit about the problem you have with uh, it taking a lot of time to import the data. Uh, so I don't know about that. Bump insert jam. Yes. I never use it, but I don't know if you know uh, the active record import jam. Mm -hmm. So it is a uh, similar jam to do bump insert, and I think it's pretty uh, popular. And I try it, it can do like uh, a couple of million records within the duration of a minute. So yeah. So maybe if you want, you can give it a try. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, like, uh, 
with my script that I uh, have written, the connection that I am connecting uh, from my script to the Bitcoin daemon. So sometimes there are API connection lost and then there were several times my uh, machine shut down and restarted like I don't know what's happened. So like uh, running few days uh, continuously and running going through transactions like millions and my, uh, my other machine couldn't like afford me anymore. So yeah, uh, my initial like, like uh, anyway I will uh, convert everything uh, somehow. Yes, and then I will let you know one day in this meetup. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Maybe you can publish a leader for or Richard Wallet. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's what I want to I want to find actually the creator of Bitcoin Satoshi where is right now. Uh, so and one other thing, uh, this happened uh, in this transaction day. This uh, transaction was uh, sent to this address over there. And then I, uh, from this GUI uh, I got from this blocksexplorer.com, I tracked this uh, wallet. And then in, at the same day, after like a uh, few minutes, like five minutes, he transferred again this uh, like almost same amount, but a little bit less uh, to another wallet. And then another wallet. And they were like, uh, until the next day, they were about four transactions uh, no like uh, 20 transactions uh, he took this uh, the same amount that like the almost same amount and transferred it to somewhere else 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 and uh, like he is going to hide somewhere yes I need to find him <laughs> <it. laughs> yep okay is that all okay thank you